as you can see we've done some work and uh yeah i dropped the ball guys i forgot to record you know how it is i'm human just like you guys are me and andrew got out here last night and i was like you know what let's see if we can take these these bed caps off so we took the bed caps off and was like well let's see if we can take the steps off and then so on and so forth so we ended up taking a bunch of crap off and i didn't record it so my bad i do apologize but i will kind of give you some tips and tricks on this if you want to get these off and i assume this works for any f-150 of this generation you're gonna have to come in and find your first clip you can reach which is going to be this one right here and you're going to squeeze that clip together down here and you're going to get it started you're going to push it up and then you're going to come over here to this one squeeze it push it up now you can get a finger hold on this thing and you want to roll it back so that's really the key to getting these off is you want to roll them back a little at a time like this these are going to be the last ones that you get out so as it rolls back like this you're going to have to kind of pull and these things will pop completely off we didn't break not one clip believe it or not now these down here are a little different <laughs> these things were aggravating you got to come in from behind underneath squeeze the clips together and then pull them out this one is hidden you cannot get to this clip so you're going to have to do your best here so you can pull these three clips out like this so you can kind of rotate it out and then what you're going to do here is have to get a pair of pliers and reach in here from the outside like fold this back reach in squeeze it and then pull it out so that you don't break the clip what else did we do well not a whole lot i guess we did take the grill out uh there are videos out there on how to take these grills out they're pretty simple these clips right here can be really really fun and it's not locked in simply because obviously we're about to paint this thing there's no point in having everything super tight so you got to get a screwdriver and stick through the grill here and pry these little metal tabs up and these will come out and pop your headlights out there's a screw back here there's a couple screws under the hood eh, nothing to really see there guys what we're going to do now is uh go ahead wash the truck off get it ready to start sanding i have been running the roads today on our new surprise that we've got for the channel i've been trying my best to do what i can do to get that ready anyway let's go ahead get started on this i will tell you this we're going to start wet sanding the truck first because that's really all that needs to be done so if you look at this paint if you look at this paint you can see where the clear coat starting to release now what we want to do is make sure that we take all of that loose clear coat off okay and then what we're going to do when we spray it we're going to lock all of that in right so that way this stuff doesn't start doing the same now what we're going to do is sand this thing with 400 grit sandpaper but not just any 400 grit we're going to use the electric sander that i have so if you guys don't have an air compressor there is another way of doing this and uh let's see i'll show you guys now granted this thing is fairly expensive it's actually an orbital polisher but it also works as a sander let me go ahead and get you guys set up on a tripod so that i can show you a little better so now that i got you set up uh this is essentially what i'm using so it's just a velcro pad that goes in between your disc and your sandpaper and what this does is allows you not to burn in on certain areas like if you're up here on this on this high ridge right here be able to push on it a little bit without burning through everything so that's what that's for anyway guys uh, i'm going to wash the truck off first get all this dirt off and we'll go ahead and get started here in just a few minutes Truth be known, this is always the hardest part of getting started on these jobs. Hitting the side of the vehicle with that sandpaper the first time, always rough. So the truck has been washed, got all the dirt and grime off of it. We just want to spray it down and get started. all right so i figured i'd go ahead and show you in real time about how long it takes to sand one now remember guys the paint is not that bad on this truck so we don't have a lot of sanding to do but what i want to do is just show you all exactly what this thing looks like whenever you use that pad <laughs> disclaimer i am not a professional painter okay so i'm going to do things that you guys don't agree with because i know some of you guys are professional painters and that's fine but i'm going to do things 
that uh, probably aren't up to your standards. But what I am gonna do are things that I know that works, right? So we're gonna do this fender. I'm gonna dry it off for you. And I wanna show you exactly what to look for whenever you're doing this yourself. And then after that, we're just gonna time lapse the rest of it, knock this thing out. And then once we're done, we're gonna come in with gray scotch bright or either just some sandpaper. And we're gonna hit all of our edges. We wanna make sure all the edges are sanded because if you don't sand those, your paint's gonna start to fill up. So once I get to my dad's house, he's got a stripe eraser. I can't find mine right now. So if you guys don't know what a stripe eraser is, it's just a big rubber wheel that you use and it'll take all of this stuff off right here without damaging the paint. So it's gonna take a little bit more pressure, a little bit more time, slow everything down to make sure that all this right here is slick as it can be. So I think we're gonna be good guys. This panel looks pretty nice. And then what we're gonna do is uh, just work our way down this thing. So from here, I'm just gonna go ahead, go to a time lapse. You guys enjoy the footage. That's right guys, so what's on the radio today? A Little bit of old school smashing pumpkins. All right, so what do we got going on right now? Well, I've gotta get this roll pan like adjusted out. This thing does not fit right. I only have one screw in the front holding everything up, but uh, I did some heating and bending and I probably should have recorded it, but this piece used to stick way out. So we wanna fit this up and we need to get these pieces to, to mount up right. The way this roll pan sits at the moment, this thing is way too far out. So. I have to push this in so that it matches up a little better. I think I have found a way to do that. See right back here, there's actually a little bit of a gap. You guys up here, you can see. So this just has like those push pins in it. So what we're gonna do is go get some nice self-tapping screws, like a Phillips head style, kind of flat self-tapping screw. And we're gonna tighten this thing up. So we're gonna pull the bottom up down here. We're gonna put some self-tapping screws down here. That way everything fits nice and tight. We don't want this thing flopping around. Uh, as of right now, it is Wednesday. Come Saturday, we will be painting the truck or getting the truck ready to paint. We're probably gonna spray it Sunday. So we're getting really close. I guess I never really did like a full walk around with you guys so you could kind of see. It's not perfect. This thing's really hard to kind of block sand, but we're gonna come in, we're gonna smooth all that out. But for the most part, this truck's pretty flat. You can see the cross hatches in it. And it's been wet sanded with 400, so this should be fine. We're gonna go back over the truck before we paint it, make sure we got everything just right. This was kind of like the initial sanding just to kind of save us some time once we get the truck over there. All the emblems have been pulled off of it, the badges, all that type stuff. Um, as you can see, this is, a, this is a booger up here, guys, to get off without breaking anything, but it can be done. Uh, the grill only has like two bolts holding the whole thing in, so we'll be able to take that back out whenever we get done painting everything. Most of the bumper's been sanded. There's a couple little defects in it, and honestly, I'm not gonna worry about that. Uh, there's one, like, kind of long scratch right here. 
I'm gonna put a little bit of filler there. Other than that, we're just gonna shoot this thing. This is not gonna be a show truck, you know? I mean, yeah, sure, we might actually take it to a show, but what I mean by that is it's not intended on being a perfect truck. I'm not gonna spend weeks preparing a body and just, it, that's just too much, guys. That's not what this is about right here. We're gonna make this thing look good, though, hopefully. <laughs> you never know how the paint's gonna turn out, how the clear's gonna turn out, and all that type of stuff, so cross your fingers for us, because we're gonna need it. We are gonna need it. This is a lot of truck, and that's a lot of black paint and a lot of clear. So hopefully we don't get a bunch of trash, bugs, and all that type of stuff in it. Either way, more than likely, we're going to be wet sanding and buffing this thing, which is no problem, except for when you get back to the bed. This area right here is going to be really tough to wet sand out. Not so much buff, but to wet sand flat. This area right here is harder than you think to get flat. I do want to let you guys know that the videos are probably going to be slow more than likely next week we're going out of town next weekend and uh, the videos are probably going to be really slow because i have to work all week and then once i get off we're going out of town for the whole weekend so i probably will not get but maybe one video out next week just letting you guys know ahead of time change of plans guys change of plans i never went and got these screws um i looked through my box of screws and bolts and stuff like that from lmr this is that like whole interior piece and I found some really nice screws that would work. They're just not self-tapping. So I decided to go ahead and drill some holes and put these things in. So I'm probably gonna put one more here and maybe one more here. Uh, you're not really gonna see any of this. So I mean, it doesn't look the best, but it's definitely pulled this thing up nice. So one of the issues that I was having with this is when you get underneath the vehicle. So as you can see, once this thing gets pushed up, you're not you're not going to put your hand up in there and be able to get to anything so what i decided to do was epoxy the bolts to the inside once you epoxy it from the inside like that it lines up good enough to where you can just push it through these holes and now you can just put the nuts on the back side of it so that's what i decided to do there and one more little tip for you and i think i got this tip from lmr either way though guys this is a really good tip as far as how to install stuff when you have double-sided tape on it so as you can see back here this whole ground effects kit has double-sided tape on it right here so the way to do this is because i know this is confusing for a lot of people because it was for me too for years is you basically want to put this thing into position where you want it at bolt it all down everywhere and then leave you a little pigtail right here and then just pull this pigtail off and this thing will seal up perfectly. If it's not too dark, I'll come out here, show you guys a little snippet. So stay to the end of this video and I'll show you guys exactly how I did that. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead, wrap this video up. And as always, thanks for watching. So everything is bolted up. And as you can see, this is still a little loose. So we still have this little pigtail here. So all you wanna do is pull up and push in as you pull up. So just come behind it, push in, like this. That's how you do that. And now everything is nice and tight. 